Welcome to this episode of the Communication, Capitalism and Critique podcast. Uh, this episode uh, is focused uh, on the 200th birthday of uh, Friedrich uh, Engels. Uh, and I will talk about Friedrich Engels in the age of digital uh, capitalism. Uh, so uh, Engels was born on the 28th of November uh, 1820. Uh, 28th of November 2020 marks Engels' 200th birthday. Uh, the journal Triple C, Communication, Capitalism and Critique, celebrates uh, Engels' importance for the critical analysis of communication and capitalism with the special issue Engels at 200, Friedrich Engels in the age of digital uh, capitalism that you can find online under www.triple-c.at. Uh, uh, the special issue consists of 11 contributions. Uh, they are focused on topics such as angles in the context of digital labor, digital capital, class struggles in the digital age, the digital dialectic, public service internet platforms, platform cooperatives, the critique of digital positivism, uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, and uh, its digital aspects, social murder in digital capitalism, digital surveillance, patriarchy in the digital age, socialist humanism and humanist socialism in the digital age, uh, imperialism or global capitalism. A lot of things uh, have been written about Engels uh, these days uh, on the occasion of his uh, 200th uh, anniversary. This special issue uh, is uh, special. Yeah? Uh, it's the only new publication about Engels that is fully focused uh, on the analysis uh, of Engels in the context uh, of digital uh, capitalism. And in this podcast, uh, cast, I will make some introductory uh, remarks uh, on the topic uh, of how to use uh, Engels' works uh, and uh, approach uh, for the critical study uh, of digital uh, capitalism. First, I want to say a couple of words about uh, Engels' work uh, and his works. Uh, Engels, on the one hand, was the organizer and the manager, so to speak, uh, of Marx's intellectual uh, works. On the other hand, he himself made important intellectual contributions to socialist theory. Uh, together with Marx, he wrote the Manifesto of the Communist Party, the German Ideology and the Holy Family. Engels also helped out Marx with writing newspaper articles that appeared under Marx's name. And he made a genuine contribution to critical theory with, with, with works such as uh, anti-shelling, outlines of a critique of political economy, the condition of the working class in England, the housing question, anti during socialism, utopian and scientific, dialectics of nature, the origin of the family, private property and the state, uh, Ludwig Feuerbach uh, and the end of classical German philosophy uh, and many uh, essays. After Marx's death in 1883, Engels spent the last 12 years of his own life uh, on editing Marx's manuscripts, which resulted in volumes 2 and 3 of Capital. Without Engels' editorial work, there would be no second and third volume of Capital. Engels was one of the few people who was able to read Marx's uh, terrible handwriting. Yeah? Uh, I mean, uh, if you look at the page uh, where uh, Marx wrote something, yeah? uh, an image uh, of it, uh, it looks really terrible. Yeah? Uh, so uh, it was really unreadable. Yeah? But Engels, uh, of course, knew Marx over decades and he uh, wrote uh, letters. So uh, he was able uh, to uh, decode uh, Marx's uh, handwriting. 
some observers and analysts claim that Engels vulgarized Marx's works, uh, that he distorted the content of Marx's original uh, manuscripts. Yeah? Mm, I do not uh, agree with this uh, analysis, yeah? and there's little uh, evidence uh, for it. Uh, in the uh, introduction to the uh, special issue, uh, I discuss uh, this topic uh, in more uh, detail. Uh, in his book, uh, Engels 200, his contribution to political economy, uh, Michael Roberts stresses that Engels, quote, did a solid job of interpreting Marx's drafts, uh, and there was no real uh, distortion uh, of uh, Marx's works uh, by uh, Engels. It's now time for a musical break. In these podcasts, I not just focus uh, on critical theory, but also uh, on a bit uh, of music. Uh, I think critique needs to combine uh, theory uh, and popular culture uh, for moving our minds and also moving our uh, bodies uh, along uh, with the mind. Uh, and uh, I think if Engels were alive today, uh, he would not just uh, criticize and theorize digital uh, capitalism, uh, he would also be a big fan uh, and supporter uh, of Creative Commons uh, and also of Creative Commons uh, music. So I want to present some Creative Commons music uh, to you uh, in these uh, podcasts. What follows is a song by the German uh, post and folk band, folk punk band, uh, Früchte des Zorns, Zorns, uh, in English that's, uh, the grapes of wrath, uh, like the, uh, book title by John, uh, Steinbeck, uh, a great German, uh, post punk band. I could also say it's a, f a folk punk, uh, in this song, uh, that follows, uh, the title, uh, is Brennen, uh, and uh, it's a song about alienated and damaged life in capitalism and how capitalism damages us. And also it's a song about the desire for uh, alternatives. Uh, Früchte des Zorns, uh, their music is published uh, using a Creative Commons license. Uh, it can be bought, but it can also be freely downloaded on their website www.fruchtedeszorns.net uh, so that's www.fruechtedeszorns.net uh, This is Früchte des Zorns und Brennen Ja, ich will leben Will nicht nur atmen Nein, ich will brennen Und es gibt nichts zu feiern Lieber drei Jahre Abenteuer als 30 Jahre lang am Leben zu erfrieren. Ja, ich will leben, das heißt auch kämpfen gegen das Sterben und das ist auch Teil von mir. Ja, ich will leben, lebendig kämpfen. Ja, ich will brennen zusammen mit dir. Ja, wir sind alle hier wie die Tiere. Domestiziert und eingesperrt Und wir laufen ganz gut im Getriebe Vor schlimmer Schreie, die keiner hört Und wir erzählen uns schon, dass wir wär das Leben Doch hinterm Riegel fängt das Leben doch erst an Und Leben, das ist mehr als ein Putschlag Und ein paar Perlen zum Gesang und hör auf, hör auf mir zu erzählen Es gibt nichts anderes, viel zu lange hab ich's geglaubt Du hast mich und meine Träume und meine Tränen so lang beraubt Du hast mich und meine Träume und meine Tränen so lang beraubt
dich selbst. Bist du glücklich mit deinem Leben? Ist das, was du machst, wirklich das, was du machen möchtest? Sparst du Zeit? Und wofür sparst du sie? Wenn es einen Film über dein Leben geben würde, würdest du ihn dir anschauen? Würde er dich faszinieren? 6 Euro für eine Stunde auf der Arbeit. Was würdest du zahlen für eine Stunde an einem sonnigen Tag im Park? Drei Kaffee auf der Raste kosten so viel wie eine Stunde deines Lebens. Würdest du in deinem Leben etwas anders machen, wenn du wüsstest, dass du nächstes Jahr stirbst? Was sagt dir, dass du denn überhaupt noch lebst? Jeder Moment Leben, der uns aus der Gegenwart geklaut wird, ist einer, der verloren sein wird für immer. Und hast du Ideen? Oder haben Ideen dich? Fühlst du dich manchmal auch auf eine bestimmte Art und Weise einsam? Eine Art und Weise, die Worte nicht beschreiben können? Fühlst du dich manchmal auch auf eine bestimmte Art und Weise unruhig? Eine Art und Weise, die dich fast zerfrisst? Du bist ein Ticket aus diesem Käfig. Du bist ein Ticket aus dieser Welt. Dein Ticket aus dieser Welt. Wir liegen alle in der Gosse und voller Sterne ist die Welt. Wir liegen alle in der Gosse und voller Sterne ist die Welt. Wir liegen alle in der Gosse und voller Sterne ist die Welt. The next part of this podcast uh, has the title The Digital Condition of the Working Class Today. Uh, I will engage with Engels' book The Condition of the Working Class uh, in England uh, that he published uh, in 1845. Engels conducted the research for his book, The Condition of the Working Class in England, uh, during his stay in Manchester from 1842 until uh, 1844. Uh, he came to Manchester because uh, he was supposed to learn uh, his father's uh, trade uh, as uh, a merchant uh, in the cotton uh, industry. Engels directly experienced the working class conditions in England uh, and got in touch with workers from whom he learned uh, about their everyday life uh, and uh, the problems they faced. Uh, in condition of the working class, uh, Engels analyzes the rise, the early development and the consequences of capitalism. Uh, the decisive features that he mentions are the working class, uh, industrial technologies such as the steam engine, uh, the capitalist class and the division of labor. In condition of the working class, uh, Engels analyzes the terrible conditions that the working class had to endure in industrial England, including, for example, long working hours, low wages, poverty, overcrowded and dirty slums and dwellings, poisonous and uneatable food, overwork, starvation, death by hunger, a lack of sleep, air pollution, untreated illnesses, egotism and moral indifference, crime, alcoholism, uh, bad clothing, uh, unemployment, rape, homelessness, lack of clean water, drainage and sanitation, illiteracy, child labor, the military drill in factories, uh, how overseer, he describes how overseers were flogging and maltreating workers, uh, the deadly uh, work accidents, fines uh, and so on. Yeah? Engels, uh, uh, for conducting his research, uh, used uh, his own observations uh, plus factory inspectors' reports, parliamentary reports uh, and the analysis of news reports. Uh, the condition of the working class in England shows that Engels already in the 1840s practiced and pioneered critical empirical social research. In Capital, 
uh, Marx uses the same empirical method uh, as Engel, Engels in, did in Condition of the Working Class. Uh, this shows that Engels' works had large influence on Marx. In Capital, Marx explicitly refers to Engels' books, book uh, several times. For example, uh, Marx writes in Capital Volume 1, quote, how well Engels understood the spirit of the capitalist mode of production is shown by the factory reports, the reports on mines, etc., which have appeared since 1845, and how wonderfully he painted the circumstances in detail is seen on the most superficial comparison of his work with the official reports of the Children's Employment Commission, published 18 to 20 years later. End of quote. Some observers uh, such uh, as McLellan uh, argue that underlying Engels' approach in condition of the working class in England is, I quote uh, McLellan, uh, a technological determinism that was to remain with Engels all his life. But I, I don't agree with this uh, assessment and I think there are, there are, there are grounds for uh, not agreeing uh, with uh, McLellan. Uh, Engels leaves no doubt that the capitalist relations of production, yeah, the private property relations, uh, the class relations between capital and labor and the profit imperative shape the development and application of machinery. Engels says that capitalism is the cause of misery. Uh, he writes that the great central fact is that the cause of the miserable condition of the working class is to be sought in the capitalistic system uh, itself. So he by no means uh, assumes that machinery, technology, uh, results uh, with necessity uh, in uh, impoverishment uh, of uh, workers uh, and, uh, and uh, humans. Uh, Engels uh, stresses uh, the capitalist and class character uh, of uh, technologies, plus the uh, potentials that uh, technologies uh, have uh, for reducing uh, necessary uh, labor time uh, so that uh, he also sees technology as a necessary material foundation of a socialist society and economy. When discussing machinery, Engels points out uh, the social conditions under which technology exists uh, and the factors, uh, the, uh, the social factors that have decisive influence uh, on how technology impact, impacts on society. Engels writes, the consequences of improvement in machinery under our present social conditions are for the working men solely injurious and often in the highest degree oppressive. Uh, he gives a dialectical analysis uh, of uh, technology, uh, not just in condition of the working class, but also in outlines of a critique of political economy, uh, a foundational text uh, that the young uh, Engels uh, wrote uh, in 1843, uh, and some argue that are outlines of a critique of political economy was the first uh, text uh, of uh, critical uh, political uh, economy. In this text, uh, Engels uh, also stresses that science and technologies are instruments in the hands uh, of the bourgeoisie. The assumption that Engels was a technological determinist cannot be sustained. Yeah? Engels analyzed technology in capitalism as embedded uh, into class relations. Uh, there is a as capitalist ownership of technologies uh, as private property uh, and technology as private property is utilized as a means for the production of surplus value commodities uh, and uh, profit. So under capitalist conditions in a class society uh, technology is a means uh, for the exploitation uh, of the working class. Engels, uh, in condition uh, of the working class, gives many concrete examples uh, of the increase of productivity through the introduction of new technologies. Uh, in the cotton industry, that he knew uh, very well, uh, the invention of the Jenny, Engels writes, quote, made it possible to deliver more yarn uh, than heretofore. Uh, end of quote. The introduction of the power loom further increased the productivity uh, of the English cotton industry. Engels write, writes, I quote, in the years uh, from 1771 until 1775, there were annually imported into England rather less than 5 million pounds of raw cotton. Uh, 
In the year 1841, there were, were imported 528 uh, million pounds, and the import for 1844 will uh, at least reach 600 million pounds. Similar productivity increase could be observed in other industries, for example, the manufacturing of wool. Since the middle of the 20th century, uh, the capitalist invention uh, and the capitalist application of digital production technologies had, has led to significant increases uh, of productivity. So the computer is a technology uh, that uh, it has increased uh, productivity uh, in the uh, economy. Just like Engels observed the impacts of technologies such as the steam engine and the power loom, today we can observe the effects of the digitalization of production. Uh, digitalization of production has mass massively increased uh, productivity. Uh, in, in my uh, own uh, essay uh, included uh, in the uh, special issue, uh, I present data uh, that you can look up uh, that shows that in advanced capitalist countries, labor productivity has more than doubled uh, over a, a time period uh, of 40 years between 1970 uh, and 2010. This, these 40 years yeah, were also the time when computing was introduced in uh, the economy uh, and uh, as a production uh, technology. Uh, so uh, capitalist digitalization has resulted in large productivity growth uh, in manufacturing uh, and other uh, industries. Today, there is lots of talk about so-called Industry 4.0. Or also the industrial internet is another term. Uh, the industrial internet and industry 4.0 are about technologies that combine the internet of things, big data, social media, cloud computing, sensors, artificial intelligence uh, and robotics uh, for the production, distribution and use of physical goods. The bourgeoisie has declared the fourth industrial revolution uh, to, uh, in order to try to automate uh, the production, distribution, handling, uh, repair and disposal of industrial goods such as car. So they imagine that a car can be automatically produced uh, by uh, robots, that it's uh, delivered uh, automatically uh, to uh, customers, uh, that it's uh, self-driving, uh, that it's uh, self-repairing, uh, yeah? uh, and when it's depo dis disposed, uh, that uh, it's also uh, recycled uh, or part, uh, disassembled yeah? uh, or, uh, or, or, or crashed uh, by robots. Yeah? So the bourgeoisie uh, in the car industry and in lots of other manufacturing industries hopes to increase uh, its profit rate uh, in the manufacturing industry by making use uh, of uh, industry 4.0. Thus far, there are lots of words about uh, the potentials of Industry 4.0, uh, 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 which is more a uh, hype uh, and more these are overblown uh, hopes. There is not enough uh, focus uh, on labor and much more focus uh, on digital uh, capital. Engels uh, pointed out uh, that the capitalist shaping and use of industrial technologies turned workers into, I quote, machines pure and simple. The capitalist shaping, development, design and use of digital technologies uh, has today contributed to new forms of alienation, such as the enslavement of mine workers who extract physical resources out of which digital hardware is manufactured, or the long working hours in the assemblage of hardware and in the software and creative industry or the always-on work culture that is mediated by laptops, phones and tablets as means of production, or think of the precarious freelancers in the digital uh, industries, uh, and uh, so on. Yeah? So uh, this shows that the rise of digital uh, technologies uh, in capitalist society and in digital uh, capitalism uh, has not uh, primarily uh, led uh, to a better working life, but has uh, led to an increase uh, of precarious uh, labor uh, and uh, an increase uh, of the exploitation uh, of labor and also of social uh, inequalities. In condition of the working class, Engels uh, provides a picture of the terrible conditions uh, that the members of the working class faced in England in the 1840s. Let's have look, uh, a, a, a look uh, at uh, one example that he gives. The women dressmakers uh, in uh, London uh, in the 1840s. He describes uh, their 
uh, working conditions. Quote, they employ a mass of young girls, there are said to be 15,000 of them in all, who sleep and eat on the premises, come usually from the country and are therefore absolutely the slaves of their employers. During the fashionable season, which lasts some four months, working hours, even in the best establishments, are 15 and in very pressing cases 18 hours a day. But in most shops, work goes on at these times without any set regulation, so that the girls never have more than six, often no more than three or four, sometimes indeed not more than two hours in the 24 hours for rest and sleep. Working, they are working 19 to 20 hour, two hours, uh, if not the whole night through, uh, as frequently happens. The only limit set to their work is the absolute physical inability to hold the needle another minute. Uh, end of quote. So Engels showed uh, how a highly exploitative uh, industrial uh, capitalism uh, was, and he gives very concrete uh, analysis uh, and uh, examples. What Engels analyzes here is the method of absolute surplus value production, uh, which means uh, that capitalists have the interest to make workers produce commodity for as many hours per day and per week as possible, for as little wage as possible. Uh, this, it means long hours uh, and uh, small wages that promise high uh, profits. Absolute surplus value production is also an important method of surplus value in, the, in 21st century digital uh, capitalism. For example, Western transnational digital corporations such as Apple, Dell, HP and Asus Tech make use of, Chinese, uh, China, of China's large and comparatively cheap labor force in order to export capital uh, so that digital hardware is assembled in China uh, by uh, workers who are contracted uh, by suppliers such as Foxconn, Pegatron, Compal Electronics or Vistron. The goal is that these uh, Western uh, tech uh, companies increase their profits by minimizing labor costs and they make use of what I uh, call uh, an international division uh, of digital labor. So uh, these digital giants are, uh, are global corporations that outsource uh, labor to uh, developing countries uh, in order to uh, highly exploit uh, digital workers uh, so that they can uh, massively increase their uh, profits. And of course, uh, these digital giants are among the most profitable companies uh, in the world. How does uh, does uh, work uh, look like uh, in these uh, factories uh, that uh, supply uh, labor uh, that uh, assembles uh, digital uh, technologies uh, that are sold by uh, Western tech uh, companies uh, from which uh, massive prof profits uh, uh, stem? China Labor Watch conducted research in order to find out how the working conditions look like in the factories uh, of the Apple suppliers. They report in one of these uh, analyses uh, that the China Labor Watch published. That's a quote. In all of the four factories uh, that were analyzed, weekly working hours surpa surpassed 60 hours and monthly overtime hours surpassed 90 hours, with most overtime amounting uh, to of 136 hours over a month. Workers were required to sign an agreement to voluntarily do overtime, opt out of paying for social insurance and opt out of housing funds. These acts are blatant attempts to evade responsibilities and are clear violations against China's labor law. Workers at Pegatron and Greenpoint were continuously working overtime without compensation. Both ex ex excessive working hours and tremendous pressure are severe problems at Foxconn. Since 2010, there have been more than 10 suicides, indicative of the terrible working conditions and rigid management. In September 2016, a China Labor Watch investigator launched another undercover investigation at Foxconn. Most workers there had accumulated 122 hours of overtime each month by exceeding the legal limit of 36 hours per month as per China's labor laws. End of quote. Just like the dressmakers, 
makers whose labor angels analyzed in the 1840s, 21st century digital hardware assemblage workers at Foxconn, Pegatron and other suppliers of Western tech companies are a largely young and female workforce that is highly exploited by capital. Capitalist hardware corporations try to make workers conduct a high number of weekly working hours for quite low pay uh, and with unpaid overtime in order to maximize, uh, minimize production costs so that these transnational corporations uh, can maximize their profits. The Chinese manufacturing industry is part of a global capitalist system where transnational corporations outsource labor to Asia in order to accumulate capital by making use of the method of absolute surplus value production. China's large working class, whose members often leave rural areas in order to find work in urban manufacturing centers, uh, is, uh, transnational, is the source of transnational corporations' cheap and highly exploited labor. Engels describes also a faction of the working class that was relatively privileged at the time uh, when he was writing. These were workers whose, uh, Engels writes, uh, state of misery and insecurity in which they live now is as low as ever. He terms these workers the labor aristocracy, uh, which he defines as an aristocracy among the working class. Uh, he says uh, that this included engineers, carpenters, joiners and bricklayers uh, who successfully, who succeeded in forcing for themselves a relatively comfortable position. Like uh, at the time of Engels, uh, the, uh, so at the time of Engels, uh, the, uh, what he termed the, the labor aristocracy, it consisted uh, of these types uh, of workers like engineers, yeah, bricklayers, carpenters and joiners. There's also uh, a uh, labor aristocracy in digital capitalism, yeah, a digital labor aristocracy. Uh, and software engineers uh, are part of the digital labor aristocracy. They hold uh, very high university uh, quality qualifications, they produce goods that are high uh, in demand, uh, high profits uh, and turnover is achieved by large transnational software uh, corp corporations which allows uh, these corporations to pay relatively high wages uh, to, uh, their, the, to their software uh, employees. Yeah? Uh, so many software engineers have uh, wages uh, that are as high uh, as uh, managers uh, salaries uh, in other companies. The poor workers who Engels portrays uh, in condition of the working class in England uh, is toiling in industries uh, such as cotton and wool manufacturing, dressmaking uh, and so on. They were compelled to work uh, long hours uh, and they received poverty wages. Uh, all of this was caused by uh, what Marx termed the silent compulsion of economic uh, relations uh, that are uh, uh, objectified uh, in the labor market uh, and that uh, in the 19th century uh, made workers uh, staff yeah, uh, and uh, earning uh, poverty wages uh, and when they lost their jobs uh, they uh, were not able to survive so they would be they basically uh, starved and uh, this need to survive and to sell your labor power in uh, capital, uh, capital, capitalism uh, is a structural coercion that uh, is uh, enforced through uh, the labor uh, market. Uh, in the 19th century, when uh, Engels conducted his uh, analysis of the condition of the working class, poverty wages were used as a means of coercion, as a method of absolute surplus value uh, production. The contemporary digital labor aristocracy, it also faces the silent compulsion of having to sell their wages. But its wages are very high because they work in a highly productive industry that produces a key commodity, namely software, that plays an influential role in almost all parts uh, of 21st century capitalist uh, society. Digitalization transforms all aspects of society, which is why software is in, so high, in, in such a high demand and allows achieving high profits uh, and high commodity uh, prices. Those who possess the key skill of knowing how to code uh, software can therefore in turn achieve high wages. Uh, absolute surplus value production in digital capitalism takes on a new form uh, in this in the software industry. Software engineers often sign all-inclusive contracts that fixes a certain wage sum per month uh, without extra extra pay for overtime. 
Uh, for example, in the United States, the Fair U.S. Labor Standards Act uh, enables software corporations such as Google not to pay overtime if there is an hourly wage of at least uh, U.S. dollar twenty-seven point uh, sixty-three. This law legally enacts absolute surplus value production uh, in the U.S. Uh, software industry. In addition, in uh, the software industry and also in other uh, industries, new management uh, methods are used to try to blur the distinction between labor time uh, and spare time and between uh, workspaces and private spaces. Uh, and uh, this means that uh, in software corporations, uh, companies try to keep the workers in the company for long hours, uh, which means that they integrate private spaces and leisure spaces uh, into uh, the, uh, the uh, workspace. Yeah? Uh, as in effect, uh, the software engineers work uh, longer hours, they make more unpaid uh, uh, over, uh, overtime, they spend more hours uh, in the employer's premises, uh, they experience this uh, additional unpaid labor time uh, not uh, as, uh, as labor and this exploitation, but as play uh, and fun. Uh, so the overall result uh, of these uh, conditions of play labor, of a playful work environment, uh, is that they work longer hours uh, that are unpaid. Uh, so absolute surplus value production in key sectors of 21st century digital capitalism, such as the software industry, takes on the form of what we can call play labor. Google employees, for example, uh, enjoy the idea of working in a high reputation company. Uh, they tend to find their work tasks very interesting. They like the perks such as free food, uh, but also, uh, which my own empirical uh, analysis that you can uh, read in the three editions uh, of the book, Social Media, a Critical uh, Introduction in the uh, chapters uh, on Google, uh, there uh, you can find this empirical analysis of working conditions of Google that show that uh, Google workers tend to complain a lot about long working hours, uh, that there's a lot uh, of overtime uh, and uh, that work at Google means, they say, uh, means a lack of work-life balance. Uh, lack of work-life balance uh, at companies such as Google uh, means that uh, a playful work environment uh, turns uh, spare time uh, activities uh, into unpaid uh, labor time. Digital capitalism has also given rise to another form of digital labor, platform labor. Platform workers are workers who mostly are freelancers and they use apps and internet platforms for finding work. Examples are the Uber and Didi taxi, drive, taxi driver, the delivery biker who delivers food, uh, and the online freelancer who uses platforms such as Fiverr, Upwork or Freelancer for finding work. All of these platforms have in common that they are large capitalist corporations that own a proprietary software program that the platform workers have to use in order to find customers. Platform workers are often piece workers. They are not paid by the hour, but for each completed service, for each piece of work. Platform labor is a contemporary form of peace labor uh, and of peace wages in digital capitalism. Uh, it aims uh, at uh, uh, via platform labor. Uh, the platform capitalists aim at the reduction of investment costs for maximizing profits. When pro platforms such as Uber, if platforms such as Uber had to pay its drivers per, uh, per, uh, per hour, it might uh, make much, they might make, make much less profit uh, than they do uh, when charging a percentage share uh, of the peace price. So the peace wage uh, is quite deliberately used by platform uh, capital ca capitalists uh, in the platform uh, uh, eco eco economy in order to maximize uh, profits. Yeah, they uh, charge uh, a, a flat uh, rate on each economic uh, transaction that is done via uh, the uh, platform. Uh, so they charge uh, a kind of rent uh, on uh, the income that uh, the uh, freelance uh, workers that use the platform are uh, making. Yeah? At the same time, this means that the platform workers are exploited by uh, the uh, platforms. Uh, platform capitalism uh, is a dimension of digital capitalism that uh, by and large advances highly precarious uh, labor. In condition of the working class in, Engl in England, Engels describes the working conditions of needlewomen who were paid per piece. So they were also peace workers. They were low paid and conducted highly tiresome labor. I quote uh, from uh, Engels. 
with the same cruelty through somewhat more uh, though somewhat more indirectly the rest of the needle women of, Lin of london are exploited uh, the girls employed in stay making have a hard wearing uh, occupation ty tiring to the eyes and what wages do they get i do not know but this i know that the middleman who has to give security for the material delivered and who distributes the work among the needle uh, 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 women uh, rec uh, receives a very low amount per piece. Uh, in digital capitalist society, transnational digital corporations such as Uber, Deliveroo, Fiber or Upwork are the contemporary middlemen that exploit digital peace workers. The next part of this podcast uh, is focused on class struggles in the digital uh, age. So class struggle is also an aspect that uh, Engels uh, writes about uh, in condition uh, of the working class uh, in England. For example, he writes about the emergence of a new unionism, new trade unions of unskilled uh, workers uh, that emerged in the 1840s uh, in uh, England. Uh, these trade unions differed from the old unions of skilled workers that were focused on wage increases. Uh, the unskilled workers often faced unemployment and no wages at all. Yeah? I think in digital capitalism we need new types of trade unions. Yeah? We need digital trade unions that support digital workers in uniting in struggles against digital capital. This does not mean that they are the trade unions that are virtual or online, it means that it, uh, these are trade unions uh, organizing the workers uh, in uh, digital uh, industries. Digital socialism begins and develops through class struggles of digital workers. And the working class has changed. Yeah? There are lots of digital workers in an international digital division of labor uh, today which also implies that class struggles in the 21st century must look different uh, than they looked like uh, in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, the forms uh, and places of work uh, have changed. There are many freelance workers today in the digital uh, industry. They are not capitalists, but members uh, of a, uh, a more complex working class. Most of them only own a computer as a means of production. They have no monetary uh, capital. They do not hire uh, other workers. Yeah? They work sporadically and precariously. And they are difficult to reach and to organize uh, in trade unions. Too often also uh, trade unions do not represent uh, freelancers. Uh, and uh, some observers tend to think of freelancers uh, as just uh, a new petty bourgeoisie or as another form uh, of capitalists, uh, which I think is wrong. Yeah? Mm, there are co-working spaces where uh, freelancers can be reached or free many freelancers are interested in using co-working spaces. Now, if unions provided co-working spaces for free or very cheaply, it would create spaces where digital workers could, could, could come together, where they could socialize. There are social spaces that could also be starting points uh, for uh, new kinds of unions that self-organize and where people come together around shared uh, economic uh, interests. If the labor movement and trade unions don't succeed in engaging and organizing on issues such as digital work, domestic work, unpaid labor, freelance work, crowdsourcing, platform work, consumer work, the work of internet users, privacy, platform work, uh, digital surveillance, consumer protection, slave labor in 21st century and so on. Uh, if they do not see these issues as key to labor struggles today, uh, then uh, there might be no future for trade unions uh, at all. To challenge the power of global capital requires the global networking of the working class and the internationalization of the trade unions, of left movements, uh, socialist parties, and also of trade union membership. In digital capitalism, strikes need to add a new digital dimension in order to be effective. On the one hand, given that lots of news, consumption and everyday communication takes place via social media, 
unions and labor movement should be present in social on social media and should mobilize and organize via social media and communicate their goals using, using hashtags, video platforms, social networking sites, messenger apps, blogs, memes, digital images, digital animations and so on. On the other hand, the digital giant corporations such as Google, Facebook and Amazon accumulate capital online. So digital strikes against such companies should make use of user boycotts, which helps, di helps disrupting these corporations' uh, strategies of profit making and allows putting pressures on them uh, and to raise certain uh, demands. Uh, in the left and in social struggles, in working class struggle, the demand for the reduction of the working day uh, has been uh, a very uh, important uh, dimension of struggle. Uh, it is a very practical combination of economic uh, and uh, political struggles. In England, for example, at the time uh, of uh, Evan Engels' uh, book, uh, The Condition of the Working Class in England, was popular in the 1840s. Uh, in 1847, uh, the 10 hours bill uh, was the result of the combination uh, of uh, the socialist movement, the union movement, and the chartist movement. In the 18, 1860s, the first international, where Marx and Engels were key figures, formulated the demand of, an, of eight hours work as the legal limit uh, of the working day. Today, we have the prevalence of temporary work, zero hours contracts, part-time work, freelance labor, uh, and so on. On the one hand, this shows that uh, labor time remains a key dimension uh, of the class antagonism and of capitalism in the 21st uh, century. Uh, on uh, the other hand, uh, we can also see uh, that there is a uh, a maldistribution uh, of uh, labor time. On the one hand, that there are those who do not work but would like to work, uh, or uh, those who uh, work few hours uh, and precariously uh, with zero hours contracts, uh, on part time jobs, uh, uh, temporary work, uh, and so on. Uh, so they are underemployed. Uh, on the other hand, there are people who are overemployed, yeah, uh, who work uh, long uh, overtime. Uh, and so on, which shows that, uh, that uh, the capital labor contradiction is also embedded in contradictions that have to do with labor time and the asymmetrical distribution uh, of uh, labor time. And the reason for it is that, of course, for capital, uh, it's cheaper uh, to em employ fewer people who uh, work uh, longer hours than to uh, employ uh, more people who have the same salary. Uh, standard, but work fewer hours uh, on uh, a lower uh, standard uh, of uh, weekly uh, working hours. But at the same time, uh, digital capitalism is a highly productive uh, society. Uh, in uh, today, the digital productive forces are developed uh, to such a high degree so that labor time could be significantly reduced and everyone could work fewer hours uh, and lead a, a better life uh, with more uh, free time and more self-determined time. Uh, so the reduction of the working week uh, with full wage compensation uh, is a radical reform that is uh, absolutely necessary today, uh, otherwise the uh, labor contradiction uh, of capitalism might explode and create ever deeper social and economic uh, crisis. Uh, and the reduction of the working week, step by step, yeah, uh, constitutes also a step towards a humanist society that transcends uh, the uh, exploitation uh, of uh, labor. It's now time for another musical uh, break. Bonnie Prince uh, Billy, Intentional Injury, uh, a creative uh, song published based on a Creative Commons license on freemusicarchive.org. Check, check it out, the Free Music Archive, uh, freemusicarchive.org. Uh, uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, intentional injury. We could also say that capitalism creates intentional injuries uh, to the lives, uh, life uh, of the members, lives of the members of the working class. Uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, in the lyrics to this song, uh, sings, "Your work has dissolved. The balance of life is shifting. All of your power becomes ours today."
uh, the work uh, of the working class that is dissolved into commodities uh, and capital, yeah, the balance uh, of uh, working class life uh, that is shifting uh, from uh, life uh, towards uh, alienation, uh, the power uh, of the working class, uh, the products of the working class uh, that become uh, appropriated by uh, capital. Uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, intentional injury. There we go. Ready? focus on angels and the critique of computational social science. Stalin and Stalinism eulogized elements from some of Engels' works. Yeah? For example, uh, in his essay Dialectical and Historical Materialism, Stalin references and quotes from Engels' works Anti-During, Dialectics of Nature and Feuerbach and the End of Classical German uh, Philosophy. Stalin applies some aspects uh, of Engels' dialectics of nature to society and claims that this means that revolutions and the transitions to socialism are, are inevitable. For Stalin, socialism as science does not mean a science of society that is different from the natural sciences. Rather, for Stalin, uh, scientific socialism uh, means that there are deterministic and mechanical social laws of nature that operate uh, in society. Uh, Stalin referred to Engels, but Engels' interpretation of dialectics was quite different from the one uh, by Stalin. Uh, Engels' uh, dialectics uh, are not based uh, on mechanical and deterministic uh, understandings uh, of nature uh, and society. So Engels is not to be blamed for Stalinism. Engels uh, stresses in the same works uh, where uh, that, uh, that uh, Stalin uh, appropriated uh, that there is a difference between the negation of the negation and the dialectic in nature and in society an insight that Stalin uh, did not take uh, serious, and that Stalinism uh, and Soviet uh, Marxism did not take uh, serious. Uh, the dialectic uh, has, uh, in each realm of the world, uh, Engels writes specific peculiar peculiarities. 
uh, and he continues to write, quote, the history of the development of society turns out to be essentially different from that of nature, because humans are all endowed with consciousness, uh, acting with deliberation or passion, working towards definite goals. Yeah? So humans uh, act deliberately and they act passionately. Yeah? They have ethics, they have morals, uh, something that you uh, cannot f uh, find uh, in uh, nature. They are self-conscious, uh, social producing uh, beings. Yeah? Uh, so humans always have different options of how to shape the future. Uh, I mean, the conditions of society, the structures, condition what is possible for humans in a certain uh, situation, but uh, the future is not planned uh, in advance, yeah? uh, it's open, uh, and how the future looks like uh, depends uh, on the results of social uh, and class uh, struggles. So it's Engels' understandings that humans act with intentions towards specific goals, uh, but and that the outcomes uh, of uh, certain collective actions are often quite different from the intentions. So what he stresses is that there are elements of chance in society. And I think in general this understanding of the human being uh, by Engels, which is also Marx's understanding of the human being, uh, is uh, a, an indication uh, that uh, Engels provides uh, a humanist form uh, of uh, socialism, materialism uh, and uh, Marxism. Yeah, so I would say that uh, Engels' works can ground uh, socialist, uh, socialist humanist uh, theory uh, and politics. As a consequence yeah, of this humanism, uh, it stresses class struggles, Engels uh, points out the importance of praxis uh, and class struggles uh, in societies. He writes, humans, quote, make their history themselves, only in, giving, uh, in, in given surroundings which condition it and on the basis of actual relations already existing, among which, which the economic relations form the red thread which runs through them. So humans make their own history, yeah? uh, like uh, Marx, uh, Engels here uh, stresses the insight that praxis, uh, that struggles, yeah, that uh, the processes of self-organization where humans collectively transform society. These are key aspects of society. At the same time, he says, uh, this praxis, the practical practices are conditioned by uh, the social relations and the economic relations, the relations of production are a red thread uh, which runs through all of these social relations and which ties together uh, the different aspects, dimensions, uh, subsystems and aspects uh, of uh, society. So this notion of the economic uh, as the red thread uh, allows us to see the economic, which just means social production, uh, is the universal and common element of all realms uh, of society. Social production takes on different forms with emergent meanings, but is also the red thread of society and its various spheres. Uh, in the book uh, Communication and Capitalism, I have used these insights here yeah, uh, that uh, social production is the material foundation of society for uh, working out uh, a theory of society and the theory uh, of communication uh, in society. This book, uh, Communication and Capitalism, is available uh, as uh, a Creative uh, Commons book for download uh, from uh, the University uh, of Westminster Press, yeah, in the University of Westminster Press Press's uh, website. Uh, so, how I interpret Engels is that he, he tells us that uh, the term scientific socialism uh, does not automatically and not necessarily uh, mean a mechan mechanistic and deterministic theory of society that assumes that capitalism automatically breaks down and that society is determined by natural economic laws. Scientific understanding of socialism is not a natural science applied to society. Rather, scientific uh, socialism, uh, how I understand it, based on Engels, is a social science of society, or what is called in, in German uh, Gesellschaftswissenschaft, which is different from social science, which just stresses uh, social and social research, uh, but it more focuses also on the uh, empirical and theoretical analysis uh, of society as a totality, therefore the social science uh, of society, uh, Gesellschaftswissenschaft. 
uh, that stresses the key role uh, of the conscious human being, of social practices, social production, and social relations in societies. In society, uh, in the social sciences, uh, there's a, uh, sciences there's a long history of the positivist tradition. The positivist tradition has treated society based on natural science methods and mathematics. It focuses on pure quantification and assumes that everything can be calculated. The logic of positivism neglects society's qualities. Uh, it neglects the fact that not everything uh, social and societal can be calculated. We can, for example, not properly calculate love, morals, sadness, life, death, happiness, respect, disrespect, justice and injustice, solidarity, uh, and so on. So these, all of these are qualitative uh, aspects uh, of society that are beyond uh, uh, measurement. It cannot be reduced uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to calculation. Uh, in the contemporary social sciences, uh, a new paradigm has uh, emerged that is almost dominant, I would say, here, yeah? uh, computational social sciences. Uh, the computational social sciences uh, attract lots of attention, support, funding, uh, and uh, have increasingly been uh, institutionalized. David Lasser, uh, in a book about computational social science, defines computational social science as a social science that leverages the capacity to collect and analyze data with an unprecedented breadth and depth and scale and operates with terabytes of data. Yeah, so computational social science uh, is big data analytics. It operates with big data. Computational social scientists set out to radically transform the social sciences. Computational social science is a new positivism. It's a digital positivism. Its methods cannot understand the qualitative features of society, such as motivations, norms, moral values, feelings, ideologies, and experiences. I think that the danger is that computer science colonizes the social sciences and leaves no space and time for critical theory, social theory, and philosophy. Engels warns in a different context uh, of the dangers of positivism. He argues against a purely mathematical method by writing uh, that such a method is reducing qualitative differences to merely quantitative differences. Uh, and he argues uh, that already Hegel has shown uh, that uh, this view, this one-sided mathematical view, according to which matter must be looked upon as having only quantitative determination, but qualitatively, uh, as identically originally, is no other standpoint than that of the French materialism of the 18th century. It is even a retreat to Pythagoras, who regarded quantitative determination is the essence of things." End of quote from Engels. For Engels, such reductive approaches are a form of, quote, naive materialism. Similar to Engels, uh, Hegel stresses that, quote, freedom, law, ethical life cannot be measured and computed or expressed in a mathematical formula. End of quote. Hegel and Engels remind us that computational social science cannot understand society's dialectical relations that are not easily quantifiable and compu uh, computable. Uh, computational social science cannot understand, model, and calculate freedom, law, moral judgment, love, and so on. Uh, its analysis, the analysis of computational social science, uh, are one-dimensional. Critical social science, in contrast, and critical uh, digital social science, critical uh, digital studies, critical digital sociology, uh, should certainly adopt and experiment with data-driven methods, but not at the expense of the engagement with and the application of critical theory and philosophy. Digital data gathered on social media and eight other data-intensive environments 
can reveal important aspects of life in contemporary societies and in digital capitalism. What is needed, however, are not simply new forms of prediction and quantification, but critical, creative and experimental methods that combine uh, aspects of quantitative data with qualitative understandings of human mot humans motivations, experiences, interpretations, norms uh, and values, plus uh, all of this should be guided <clears throat> by critical theory uh, and by uh, philosophy. Uh, and uh, I call such an uh, approach uh, critical uh, digital uh, research, yeah, which is based on uh, critical theory uh, and critical uh, empirical uh, research. I want to draw some conclusions uh, in this uh, podcast and would like uh, to again uh, refer you to Triple C's uh, special issue on uh, Engels uh, and digital uh, capitalism on the occasion uh, of uh, Engels' 200th uh, birthday that we uh, celebrate uh, in uh, in, uh, November 2020. Uh, Engels' 200th anniversary <clears throat> is an excellent occasion for the analysis uh, of uh, the conditions of the working class and the life uh, of the working class in digital capitalism. Uh, Engels' works remain highly relevant in 21st century society and can inform the critical analysis of digital capitalism, technology and society, computational social science, digital positivism, digital labor, digital labor struggles, uh, the digital commons, and so on. Computing has helped creating foundations for a highly productive post-scarcity socialist society. Uh, a post-scarcity socialist society is a society where wealth for all is possible and culture is the common property of the whole of society. Writing in the 19th century, Engels wrote of science, art uh, and more general forms of intercourse as aspects of culture that in a socialist society benefit all. Today, Engels would also include digital technologies such as the internet when speaking uh, about the commons and he would demand the creation of digital commons. If Engels were alive today, he would criticize all digital capital accumulation models and the exploitation of digital labor. He would argue that digital technologies shouldn't be capital and commodities, but common properties available without payment to the whole of society uh, uh, and uh, in such a manner that they benefit uh, everyone. Today, Engels would certainly support the creation uh, of uh, a public service internet uh, and of commons-based internet uh, platforms. 200 years after Engels' birth, capitalism is alive. But Marx and Engels are not dead, they are ghosts. Marx and Engels are ghosts that keep on haunting capitalism in the digital age. They haunt capitalism in the forms of class struggles and critical class analysis. In the book Friedrich Engels and Modern Social and Political Theory, Paul Blackledge writes that Engels is a representative of, I quote, a dynamic, humanist and creative, end quote, critique of the political economy of capitalism. Engels' 200th birthday reminds us of the class character of digital capitalism. Uh, Engels reminds us that we need critical digital social science as a new form of scientific socialism uh, in 21st century uh, as a critique of digital capitalism uh, and of digital class society. Uh, this is the end of the theory part of this podcast. Uh, I was talking about Triple C's special issue on the occasion of Engels' 200th birthday. Uh, the special issue is focused on Engels in the age of digital capitalism and can be accessed uh, as a Creative Commons uh, publication on www.triple-c.at. Uh, but I will leave you with some more music uh, by Tyranny is Tyranny a post-noise rock band from Madison, uh, Wisconsin, that also publishes uh, its uh, music, uh, Creative Commons. Uh, you can find it on freemusicarchive.org uh, and you can also follow and support the band on tyrannyistyranny.bandcamp.com. Uh, 
the track that we will uh, listen to uh, is called Victory uh, Will uh, Defeat You. Uh, the band uh, describes itself uh, as a post-noise rock band focusing on dynamics, repetition and the dismantling of capitalism. I'm sure Engels uh, would like this focus uh, of the band and also the music. Uh, and Tyranny is Tyranny uh, is also the title uh, of uh, a chapter in Howard Zinn's book A People's History uh, of the United uh, States. The track Victory Will Defeat You uh, is featured on the album The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. Uh, and of course that's also a reference to Naomi Klein's book The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. So I'm leaving you with tyranny is tyranny and victory will defeat you. Goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.